Today, I'm going to tell you about a 12-year-old girl in Connecticut. This story will be hard to hear. This story is real, but I'm going to use a fake name to protect her identity. Let's call this 12-year-old Allison. So when Allison was 10, she started using her grandmother's Snapchat account. Logged in as an adult woman, the platform operated as advertised. Allison had fun playing with the goofy filters and added friends that she knew in real life. She was not approached by strangers. No one attempted to exploit her. No one sent her explicit messages. When Allison was 12, she got her own phone. Her parents said no to Snapchat, but she signed up anyway without telling them. Allison would download the app after her parents went to sleep and then delete it in the morning so they never knew she was using it. Allison quickly became dependent on Snapchat. Her grades slipped. Her personality changed. She was sleep deprived because she stayed up late on the platform. Through the quick ad feature, Snapchat had begun recommending friends to Allison for her to connect with. Adults. Strangers. Snapchat incentivizes you to accept and interact with the recommendations that it makes by giving you a snap score. The score goes up with each new snap sent to your connection. Snap told Allison that she may know these people, that it's safe and that it's fun. But right away, Snapchat was an entirely different product for Allison at 12 than it was for her grandmother's account. Allison began receiving dick pics and requests for nude photos from the users that Snapchat had recommended to her. She began using Snap's in-app reporting system, and time after time, Snap did nothing in response. The users continued to send her nude photo after nude photo. The next part of the story starts on July 15, 2019. Allison was still 12 years old, and Snap directed her to contact with Reginald Sharp, a 34-year-old sex offender. Allison saw a new user being recommended to her in the Snapchat quick ad area, and she added this friend thinking she must know him. Snapchat states that Quick Ad connects users with people they know, or at least have mutual connections with. Even if you decline to connect, you sometimes get a pop-up that says, are you sure? Interacting with friends is what Snapchat is all about. So Allison, who was 12, connected with this suggested friend, who we know now is a registered sex offender. A child wouldn't know that they're being connected with a dangerous stranger on Snapchat because Snap requires users to use a Bitmoji. Let me show you what this sex offender looks like compared to his Bitmoji. This is 34-year-old Reginald Sharp. Snapchat is turning adult predators into cute cartoon people and telling our kids these are people you may know. Users don't even have an option to use a real photo. Everyone looks like a big-eyed, innocent cherub version of themselves. For Allison, Snapchat created an atmosphere of trust. And now's where things get really bad. Reginald gained Allison's trust on Snapchat. He knew she was 12 years old. He coerced her into sending explicit photos through Snapchat's disappearing message feature. Reginald began to try to entice Allison with money or drugs in exchange for sexual acts. Then he said that he would post the private photos she had sent him unless she had sex with him. As a reminder, all these conversations are happening on a platform that should be safe for kids because that's what Snapchat tells us it is. But in reality, Snapchat actively connects kids with sex offenders. So on July 23rd, 2019, just eight days after first contacting Allison, Reginald coerced her into sneaking out of her home in the middle of the night to meet him. That night, he raped 12-year-old Allison. The next morning, Allison's mother knew something was wrong. She found out what happened and reported it to the police. Investigating, detectives were quickly able to find Reginald through his public Facebook info, and he was arrested. He currently resides at the Cheshire Correctional Institution in Connecticut. Snap was served a preservation notice and a search warrant. They were made aware that this user is a predatory sex offender who Snapchat knows that they connected with a minor that he went on to rape. Despite this, it appears that Reginald's Snapchat account is still active. It was last found again at the end of February of this year. The avatar has even been updated, indicating that either Snap itself made changes to the appearance of Reginald's avatar or that he's actively using it or someone has his login. Fast forward to 2021, Allison is now 14 and again she's sneaking access to Snapchat. Snapchat recommended that Allison connect with a 34-year-old male user named Eddie Rodriguez, who went by Jonathan Eddie. Yet again, this user is a registered sex offender. Jonathan Eddie groomed and coerced Allison into giving her phone number and address. They exchanged explicit messages and photos. Eddie convinced Allison to let him give her a ride to school, and when she got into his car, he sexually assaulted her. This man has since been arrested and is currently residing at the Hartford Correctional Center in Connecticut. Allison is now 15, and since these terrible attacks, she has been hospitalized and is in counseling. She suffers from anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. 
She has tremendous pain and guilt for what her dependency on these products and her innocence and trust in them caused for her family. Her dependence was so bad that at one point her father would sleep in the hallway just to stop her from running away so that she could regain access to Snapchat. In the end, Allison was too young for Snapchat per their own guidelines, yet they allowed her to sign up for multiple accounts, which is a violation of their own terms. She even used the same phone number and device for several of those accounts, leaving no doubt that Snap knew what was happening. Snap then actively connected her with not one, but two registered sex offenders who ended up physically assaulting her. Snapchat is defective, it's dangerous, it's harming children, and we're done. It's too much. Too many children have been harmed or killed. Snap has designed a product that makes it nearly impossible for parents to exercise any parental responsibility. There's a lack of parental controls, a lack of monitoring capabilities. They purposefully made it addictive, actively and blatantly encouraging children to log in every day, to keep posting, to keep adding friends. It scores and rewards these behaviors. In Allison's case, Snapchat failed her. They failed to protect her and keep their promise of providing a safe and fun platform. They drew her in and spit her out, a shell of herself. And the same thing is happening to millions of kids. The story is not unique, not by a long shot. If you are as infuriated as I am, I hope that you'll join me in boycotting the most dangerous platform on the internet, Snapchat.